so welcome to another war game review from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at a game. This is from 2019, actually, and it's called Interceptor Ace. Um, it's designed by Greg Smith. You know his games like uh, The Hunters, The Hunted, Silent Victory. He did Night Fighter Race last year. He's got a whole bunch in the works as well. Um, so this is one of the newer ones that he's done. And when Night Fighter Race was, you know, you're flying uh, BF-110s and modified Dorniers and things like that to, to intercept, uh, basically, British Bomber Command uh, at night on night raids, Interceptor Race is kind of the daylight equivalent. Um, you're mostly going up against things like B-17s uh, or B-24s. And as you can see, we got a Messerschmitt 109 on the front. Um, you are a, a, usually a, usually a single man aircraft. This has a ton of fuck wolves in it as well, and, and there's a few other it, a bunch of variations, different aircraft in here too. But you're a you're a single plane interceptor, and it's you're going to fly up. You're ideally victory points wise, you're trying to shoot down bombers. Uh, however, in daylight raids, you will very often be intercepted, and you'll have to do dogfights beforehand with other. Um, uh, U.S. fighters, things like uh, Mustangs and all that, and Spit uh, like late war, I think like Mark Nine Spitfires, but uh, so it's a similar style of game. The setting's different, and then kind of how it plays out is actually quite different. Even though the core concept is very familiar, uh, what Night Fighter Race you feel like that was, you know, you're it's almost you're trying to be stealthy. You pick your shot. You take your shot, and you might go in for a couple extra rounds if the Lancaster start to corkscrew, and then it's kind of like let's try and get home. It, you know, it's kind of one up, one down is how I felt. This one, I feel like there's a lot more uh, uncertainty. Uh, that one, you know, the, the, the night fight, night, like Bomber Command didn't have fighter escorts. It was nighttime. Uh, this one, those the fighter escorts, not only are very, very dangerous, but they are also entirely distracting you from your victory conditions. So it's a, this this is a very interesting dynamic to it, it from a game standpoint. I feel like some of the other games that Greg's designed, you know, it's it's more of almost like a push your luck of like you know, oh, can we get can we you know can we sink one more ship? Can we do one more patrol? Can we get out one more flight? Uh, kind of a thing. This this one is, I don't even know if I'm going to even, not only not find something, but I might find something that's quite likely that will just shoot me totally out of the sky. I, accruing victory points in this one I felt was far more difficult in the grand scheme, if you think about what your goal is, right? Of shooting down the actual bombers. Um, so this one offers a little bit more, a little bit more meat is what I would say to it. Uh, and it also has, so... You'll recognize th this core concept from a lot of his games. You know, it's all the, it, this is the damage you'll do to the bombers when you're attacking them, when you have your range increments and things like that. But there's this whole separate uh, kind of escort interceptor board. You'll have to do fighter combat before you can even engage the bombers, if you even survive to do it. Uh, and so there's a whole bunch here. And, and it's a, it shares a similar idea, right? You've got all these damage markers. You're fighting against um, all these different planes. They're obviously much smaller, so that there's fewer damage points. You know, it's easier to get shot down, I'll say that. But it also has this orientation aspect, which is very similar in style to uh, how Down in Flames works, with, with you know, like, I'm advantaged or disadvantaged, or tailing, or head-on. You're trying to gain position based on your agility scores so that when, when or if you're even able to, um, to play out the actual combat, uh, you know, you'll do extra hits, or you won't even be able to get your guns on target. You're getting shot out of the sky. So there's, there's this whole extra part to this game, which, which does add more meat to it, but again, it makes it far more lethal. If you're used to a game like Silent Victory, for example, you know, you can kind of stealth around, you can opt to not shoot a target, 
if you're, you know, unsure that you might be successful. This one, it's like, you, you can't turn down shooting the interceptors because they're going to they're gonna fight you too. So it's, it's very, very um, cool in that way. Um, as such, what I will say is um, the campaigns, this is my first ever campaign, are much, much shorter. Uh, it's, this is, you know, so this is, this is my, your little, um, kind of plane, this is plane, right? So this, this is what I started with. And down here you've got all these damage markers, and it is not a lot. You take three airframe hits and you, you're dead, you fall out of the sky. You take two hits on some of these, you fuel tanks, you just blow, blow up and die. It's, it, you are, um, very fragile in this game. And so it, it's a different dynamic, knowing how close to death you always are in this one. I felt like I was far more, um, or far less risk averse, let's say that. I was much more willing to gamble, because, you know what, if you get a, if you get a good rake uh, from, from a B-17, you're done anyway. So why not push it? Because, and, and that to me is some of the fun in these games is, almost like a push, you're like, how far can you go? Because um, in this one, more than any of his games, I feel like surviving the entire campaign, just good luck. If you make it through all of your patrols, all the way through um, February 44, fair play to you. It just, it's very difficult to have done that. So that's, in this, in that way, it's quite fun because you're just like, Let's just throw it out there and let's just go as hard as possible, almost. And so it, it, it's just a different feel in that way to some of the other ones. Like things like Night Fighter Race, I felt like you could survive a, a good shooting, but like, you know, you, you'd limp back to fight another day. And I was much more intent on surviving those campaigns. It's very difficult to do as well, but in this one, you're like, Let's just go for it. I, w I was much more willing to gamble in this one. And it never pays off. You, you always get shot down in this. But it's, you know, if you like this style of game, it gives you a different... It, I, of all of them, this gives you a different feeling to, to some of the other ones, I feel. Because, it, because of how weak you are, basically. It removes the shackles of try, trying to survive. So you do crazier things. I, I, that's that's kind of how I feel about it, anyway. Um, on top of that, so, so, how this game works, it works very similarly to all of his other ones, let's, let's start there. Um, you're rolling on charts to see where you're based out of, you're rolling on charts to see where the raids are coming in, and then you have to go and intercept those, try and find them, and then it's rolling on charts to fight, rolling on charts to do damage, and this one, uh, this one uses the card system that they had in Night Fighter Race as well, where your damage, you flip a card based on your value of all your weapons, you cross-reference that, that's how many hits you do, then you roll your hits out on chance. I like the card system, I don't know what it is about that, but having a closed system of cards that you cycle through, for some reason I, I enjoy that, I feel like... I'm less susceptible to just rolling ones all the time, which is something that I'm, uh, that tends to happen to me. So I, I enjoy the cards because at least some of the cards might be good at some point. I, I know that rather than my dice might always be bad. Just that's my bad luck. That's all. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually show you how it works and then I'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. Uh, so here's a look at the game. And these are the major things that you're going to have out, uh, like laying flat. Uh, we've got here, this is your fighter, here we've got a Falk Wolf, and it's the, uh, so it's Falk Wolf 190A4. Again, there's a ton of different variations of these. So this one, it says Prestige Level None, which means you don't have to be a good pilot, this is just your first plane. It has a speed of 20, the speed comes into play when you're going up against um, enemy fighters. It has here a little kind of a tracking area for where you're based, and this is effectively tracking your fuel. This is how much time you have in the air. Uh, here you've got, this is where you're gonna take all your damage. There's some boxes for your wingman, uh, for your skills, and you're gonna track your ammunition for all of your different cannons and guns, and they have a value here, and that's gonna come into play when you're actually doing combat. Here we have our kind of target chart. This is for um, bombers, we've got B-17s, B-24s. 
uh, you're gonna put damage markers on if you you know if you shoot the airframe five times one two three four five the airplane's gonna disintegrate fall out of the sky you shoot out a plane you get victory points for that um, there's um, some range markers here for how far away you are from the plane this is very similar to something like silent victory uh, down here we have this is something that's entirely new uh, this is our fighter target chart before you get into bomber combat you might be um, fighting an escort they might intercept you and so there's this kind of back and forth with how your speed is um, your different skills and reflexes you might have and that's gonna you know, that's gonna give you modifiers that's gonna put you either like advantaged or disadvantaged um, with regards to the enemy and, and kind of how that plays out so let's let me grab uh, this was my fog wolf. If I can find it, he says. So, for example, uh, we might, if we're fighting a Spitfire Mark 9 and we're kind of coming head to head, that's how we're going to arrange that. However, if he's tailing me, right, I can't, I literally can't shoot my guns at him. I'm going to get raked with fire, that's it. Or you might be somewhere where you're advantaged. If I'm shooting him, not only am I able to shoot him, but I might get a plus one to the number of hits that I might do. There's a lot of different factors with how you do this. It's, it's pretty neat how that how this plays out. Uh, and then you'll have kind of your uh, campaign chart where you're going to write down what you find, do you kill, yes or no, how it all plays out, um, all this kind of stuff that's very typical from this kind of game. The other thing that you'll have outside of dice is uh, you'll have a series of charts. And you will roll on the charts, and the charts are going to tell you, first off, where the raids are coming from. And these are nice, kind of glossy, let's see if we can get the light on there. These are really nice quality, and they're color-coded, which is nice. I don't think I've had one where the raid charts were color-coded based on the locations, which is very cool. Just helps you just quickly identify, oh, this one's really far away, or this one's close. Just a little visual aid there, I like that. So you're going to roll on the charts 2d6 to figure out where it is. So you chuck your 2d6, and let's say our raid, we got a 6, and let's say we're in March, uh, the raid is going to be in on a ruin rail in France. Oh, that's funny. We're based out of Bremen, and we can't even get to France. So let's roll, let's roll for one we can do. Oh, we rolled a 12. Imagine that. A total waste of a 12 there. Um, so for a 12, we're going to be in the rug beat. Cool, that's really nice for us. Now, so what that means is we're going to take off, and the rug starts here. So we're going to have one, two, three, four chances um, for us to try and um, get into combat, shoot down bombers, things like that. But yeah, so you roll for where your raid is, uh, and then you're going to roll for what your target aircraft is as well. So this one's nice and easy. You're going to roll the D10. And we're here, so this is what our bomber is. And we roll the 7. And so on a 1 through 7, it's a B-17. So we know we're going to go up against a B-17. And in this early part of the war, there's no fighter escort. Now, the later the war gets, the and I, mean, I mean, there's an ungodly amount of uh, really good uh, escorts that come in. So if, if you're early war, you would then just proceed to this kind of combat. Well, all you're trying to do is basically shoot them down. So you're going to put yourself, let's say, um, if you start at long range, it says all bombers do minus one random hit at long range versus all BF 109 times. I'm not a 109, so that kind of sucks for me. Um, and we are going to intercept a... Okay, that's great. So yeah, basically, if you want to just engage at close range... You might do more hits, but they will also do more hits. So th there's some stuff that you've got to kind of figure out on this one. And we were going up against the B-17. Let me get my build B-17 counter out. It's this guy here. Ooh, little B-17. Um, but, but then at this point, what you do is you're going to line up your guns. And I say I've got 6 plus 4 plus 2. And that gives me 12 points. So I'm going to flip one ammo counter to expend an ammunition for my forward cannons. And then I'm going to flip this counter also to, to flip, to engage with these cannons. My machine guns have unlimited ammo for the purposes of this game. 
and then what you do is you're going to go up against this card. You flip a card off the deck, and this one says, here, my firepower, for example, uh, if I look under the 12 column, I'm going to do three hits. Uh, that that's It's really, really simple in that way, and all these cards have a ton of different values. So on this one, a 12 would give us five hits. On, on this one, a 12 would give us DE, destroyed. This is a really nice card, for example. Uh, there's also this GP value, which means you do, uh, like, it's what's called grouped damage. You'll do a bunch of damage in kind of a specific area. So if you kind of, if you hit in the wings, you'll do a bunch of uh, control surfaces, uh, wings, fuel tanks, engine hits, kind of all, all clustered in one area. It kind of gives you, it's a bit more uh, specific, which is nice. But there's also defensive fire on here, so defensive fire. We might take five hits, we might take zero hits. Or it might say defense, uh, they avoid all damage, plus improve two spaces. That's for fighter combat. So if we're going head to head, and they, they ignore all of our damage, and they improve two spaces, well, one space... Uh, is I think this, and then so you you start they get a, they get the jump on you. That's you start getting really bad, or you might get your wingman gets an attack with eight uh, five power points as well. But you then roll on charts, right? So you go back to the charts once you've rolled all your damage, and uh, that's kind of where your damage comes out. So we have here that's our fighter damage chart. We don't want that. We want the bomber damage chart. Here we go. Uh, so this is the group damage I was talking about. If you get that group value, depending on if you're shooting at the airframe, starboard wing, or port wing, because you're going to decide which kind of area you're aiming at before you fire, you'll do this package of damage. Whereas, if you don't get that result, what you will simply do is, if you're aiming at the airframe, you're just going to roll that many hits on this random chart. So you just get that D10 back out, and you roll... Oh, a three. So I do airframe plus uh, a gunner's going to be wounded. Nice. I roll again, and I roll a two. So the airframe's going to be damaged. And I roll again, I roll a six. So the, the, another crew injury. So that's four hits, for example. But what we're going to do is we hit the airframe one time, two times. If this ever slides down here, it just falls apart and never dies. Uh, we killed one of the gunners. Um, so we're just going to uh, put a one on the gunner hits. And these mount up, and they, they'll subtract from the number of hits that a bomb was able to do in defensive fire eventually. Um, we also did a regular crew injury as well. So you're going to then roll that uh, on, the, uh, on the crew injury table, which is... I'm probably just being blind. Attack results. Sequence of, it's probably on here, I believe. Aircraft damage. Do we have, I think it's this one here. Bomber crew injury, here it is. Okay, so you're gonna roll 2d6. And so we roll a 5, and a 4 through 10 is another gun is gonna get injured. So, quite simply, you, this is gonna go from a 1 to a 2. And as those build up, that's, that's very helpful for survivability. Uh, the other important part is that you do only have limited time to try and find your bomber. So before you're able to engage in combat, you gotta find them. And that's what this little track up here is for. So we're based out of um, Bremen, and I've got to fly over Bremen, I've got to fly over Berlin, and then I get to Frankfurt and the Ruhr here. So I've got one chance to find them here, I've got one chance to find them here, and then I've got to land because I run out of fuel. So you do have to be um, careful uh, with how and when you, or, or like, that's just, that it limits how much opportunity you'll have to, to do things. And here you can see there's little bomb symbols because they've already dropped their bombs before you engage them. You engage them all the way back. And there's a flak symbol, so they're going to have some flak damage on them already. Maybe. Um, but you're going to roll on the actual intercept table to see if you even find them uh, and how and when. Uh, but, but that's what this game is, right? It's a game of... You know, you're, the story's happening, right? You're rolling on the chart. Oh, this is where the raids come. Let's go find them. If we can find them, we can try and engage and shoot. But it's, you know, I put, engage all my guns. Boom. This is how much damage I do. I roll to see what the damage is. Oh, the defensive fire comes in and they do one hit. So I'm going to roll on a different table. 
the uh, the fighter damage table. So I'm going to write this, and in this sense, this is a 33. And so I look at the 33, and I get a hit on my airframe, which that doesn't feel good because if you look at my airframe, I can only take two more hits on there. So if I get raked one more time, I'm going to take three hits. Great. So I roll uh, a 16, and a 16 is a, a GM1 boost. I don't have one of those, I don't think. Yeah, I don't have the GM1 boost. So if you don't have it, it's just a miss. You roll again. I roll a 65. 65 is an airframe. So now I'm like wetting myself on this last roll. And I roll a 63, and a 63 is a crew injury. Well, <laughs> Grew injuries, for me, not good, because uh, there's not a lot of people in my plane, for example. Uh, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna roll the bones, and you kind of see what happens. Uh, so if we got a crew injury, we're gonna roll 2d6. And we rolled a 10. Oh, good gracious. Okay, that, that's actually quite nice. Do we have a board shot in this one? Or am I a single airplane? I think that's I think that's a miss. I think it's just me in this one. If you're on some of the one tens where you've got like a um, a gunner and a like you have a, a a second person in the pilot in the in the plane, then you're okay. But if you know, it's really easy to roll. Oh no, I'm wounded as the as the pilot on a two through seven, and then you roll a d6 for severity. I rolled a three, so I am lightly wounded. LW is a light wound. You roll a six, you straight up, you're dead, right? And, and, the, and the game's over and you gotta start, like, again. But, the, and then it's, you know, you gotta limp back home with all these damage markers on you, try and land or bail out if you get shot down. So, there's some really neat bits and pieces to this one, but really, this is a game where you are trying to just kind of roll with it and see what happens. Again, it's one of those narrative games, story-driven games, so that's kind of the core of how this game works. The fighter combat's very similar, it's more just you got that positioning in there as well, but you're trying to shoot each other out of the sky and then move on to the bombers when you're like all raggedy already. So that's where I talk about the survivability. It's very hard to, to live through this one. So uh, what we'll do, I'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the game and some of how, some of how it works. I mean, it's very, it's actually very simple, right? It's, it's not a complicated game in any way, shape or form. Um, there's a whole bunch more of these titles coming out. He's got, I think it's called Western Front Ace, which is World War One. We demoed that at WBC. That looks very fun. He's also working on a Spitfire Ace. There's so much other stuff coming from this uh, system too. Just, you know, that, that's Greg. He's always working to put something else out or, or explore new ideas with what you can do with solitaire gaming. But... In end effect, you have to understand that these games are a solitaire, narrative-based experience, right? You know, there's games out there, things like Fields of Fire, where you have this whole command structure, and it's very crunchy, and it's all about choices and making things happen. Here, the choices are much more limited in scope. You roll on a chart, that's what happens. You roll on a chart, this is what happens. Your choices are how and when you choose to engage, but you have to engage, and then maybe which weapons you fire, which weapons you don't fire, but a lot of the game is rolling on charts and seeing what happens to you, and out of that comes some fun, cool stories. But understand, these games, I feel, are very light, right? This is the kind of thing that's got a small footprint, you can set it up anywhere, you know, take it on vacation, have it, you know, on, on your desk for lunch break, and you just roll a couple times, do a couple patrols, alright, and then the next day, roll a couple times, do a couple patrols, and you just kind of go through it over time, see what happens. It, but you can get some really neat, cool stories out of it, especially with the dogfighting, that's right up my alley, I just, I think Air War is something that's fascinating, it, it's eye-catching, it looks great, some of my favorite war films cover that topic and so you know doing the little positioning and you're like oh let's get my burst in shoot my cannons try and shoot shoot down you know the the enemy and then it's kind of break off can i get the bombers down as well i, I like the visuals you know players that in my mind but the reality is that you're rolling on charts 
and it's a lot of it is what happens to you rather than you deciding I'm going to do this thing and this thing and then we roll to see if we do it kind of thing it's more like all right this happens this happens this happens and those dice are more like oh no oh no all these bad things happen and a lot of bad things will happen to you in this one uh but yeah very you're very fragile it happens you'll die you just start a new campaign start a new guy go again try and do a bit better or or you know try a different plane and that's the one thing i will say about this one um uh, there's let me just get them all out because there's an ungodly amount of them there's so many different planes and these are all double-sided with different planes as well tons of different variations a lot of its variations of 109s and fuck wolves but there's 110s, um, and there's, I think they've even got like some, uh, like there's an ME410 right there as well. They got some odds and ends in here, which are pretty rare. Get, getting to actually fly them through the campaign can be difficult, but frankly, you can just fudge the rules and just do it yourself, because the solitaire police aren't going to come and catch you. That's not how it works. So, there's... A fun game here. I, I enjoy this system. I like all, like pretty much all the games in this uh, system that Greg does. It's rare that there isn't one that I didn't like. Uh, but this one, it does, uh, it, like I said, this one gives you something a little bit different because you're so weak that I'm not concerned with my own survivability. I'm taking that parachute skill. That's the first skill I'm going to take because I know I'm going to get shot down. I know it's going to happen. Um, there's, I don't, I don't think it's feasible to survive the whole war without being shot down. So like, you're taking that parachute skill, uh, you're taking any, any survivability skills first, as far as I'm concerned. That's how I play this. And then it's just going as hard as you can and, you know, that, so I have a different approach with this one. And that's what this game provides me, which was neat. Uh, it was something very different from the sneaky stealthy of something like silent victory of like oh i want to line up a really good shot oh this convoy is too much for me because i'm not in good shape let's pull back let's try a, the next space and engage someone else maybe and this is like oh this is it this is what we got let's go for it and so it, it gives you a, a degree of um kind of freedom in that sense to just like throw it all to the wind and see what happens almost so that's a, a lot of what this one offers but Thematically speaking, if you like, you know, things like the 109, the Fuck Wolf, you get to fly those and try and uh, engage in the in the dogfighting air-to-air combat. Gives you a nice extra bit of meat that's not in any of the other games so far. That that I think made it more than just rolling on charts. There's this little extra part that you do just gives a little bit more flesh on the bones of this one as well. Ah, uh, but all in all. I always have a fun time playing these. So this is Interceptor Ace, designed by Greg Smith, put out by Compass Games. It's available now, um, so check it out. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.